Warning, this video will contain spoilers up to chapter 1028. You've been warned. Hello my Nakamotachi, this is Joy Girl here to discuss with you the big question which was revived as a result of the latest chapter. Chapter 1028 was such a good chapter. It's one of those that got you really excited for some potential upcoming events in the story. There's a huge intrigue with Sanji emotionally dealing with his newly acquired powers, but this discussion itself will center around another potentially huge subplot that was set up in this chapter, which is the impending arrival of the marines in the land of Wano to annex the country under the world government's orders. Subject to condition. And this should come as to no surprise really because the possibility of the world government arriving at Wano has come up multiple times and I discussed it myself particularly due to the comments made by the director of the anime Nagamine who teased the possibility of a big enemy at Wano following Kaido. But whilst these discussions all remain speculations and possibly the result of a mistranslation, the recent chapter marked an appearance by Rob Lucci who is still firm on his agenda to capture Nico Robin which he has had some success in in the past only for it to be ruined by some rubber boy and his friends. And with the condition being Kaido's defeat which I do believe is extremely likely and even almost a certainty then it becomes all the more likely that the world government will indeed make a move on Wano. In that video about the director's comments I did raise some doubts about the marines showing up due to the comment that was made in the series about them not having enough manpower. But but also that if the story develops so that their available resources are sufficient, then we may see it after all. And now, as the Marines' involvement is contingent on Kaido's defeat, it seems that they are confident that their current forces are enough. Now from what we saw, Luchi doesn't seem to be aboard any of these ships, as the background interior during his scene seemed to be the inside of a very fancily designed room, which could perhaps be Marijuana. But obviously, a Marine fleet will still need to be led by a high-ranking officer, especially if we consider the fact that Wano has a huge number of big name pirates and whether Kaido loses or not, it would be in the world government's best interest to bring along a high ranking commanding officer who's a formidable fighter in their own right. But who this is aboard the ships is a very exciting mystery which has fans talking and is indeed the subject of this video. And one of the potential candidates is Admiral Ryokugu or Green Bull, an idea that has been highly popular due to all the theories linking Wano to the Marine Admiral which only increased after the the reveal of Shimotsuki Ushimaru, who some now think may be the Admiral himself. Amongst other things, the premise of this theory is based on the connection between Green Bull fasting and the Wano Samurais whose dignity ignores hunger, and the fact that the name Ushimaru contains the name Ox in Japanese, with the anime even colouring the Ox symbol on his clothing green. Like, Green Bull. And whilst I do have reservations about Green Bull being Ushimaru, Green Bull's connection to Wano isn't an entirely meritless idea. After all, Green Bull was kind of introduced to us just prior to the start of the Wano arc. I say kind of because Oda did his usual silhouette mystery character thingy. So that teaser we got before Wano could have its payoff at the end of the arc. And Fujitora is another potential candidate for making an appearance at Wano. For a while, many in the fandom have been speculating that these two new admirals share a history prior to joining the marines. And they were in fact seen acting familiar towards one another with Green Bull going against Akainu's orders and both men were last heard of facing against the revolutionary army. Fujitora too has long been linked to Wano largely due to his choice of attire and considering the possible history between these two, both admirals appearing at Wano has also been speculated. And if they do indeed arrive together at Wano, then it could be the result of a direct order from the world government but considering the possibility that they do in fact have a personal link to Wano, then the excitement would be heightened even further. It would be great to see both men have more of their own personal reasons for giving Wano the treatment they think it deserves based on their personal agenda. Fujitora, whom we know to hold a certain distaste of the world government and going on the assumption that Green Bull is morally geared towards someone he gets along with, then both men, knowing the dark side of a country under world government control, could show up at Wano and protect their country from coming under the control of such a force. Plus, Seeing Fujitora drop a meteor shower on the Zoans using his devil fruit is a really cool image I could imagine. We know Oda likes to draw on real life events and history, so Fujitora's meteor shower to wipe out the Zoans would be a really great play on the idea of the asteroid which led to the extinction of dinosaurs. Personally, if I could pick a Marines affiliated character I would like to show up at Wano, then I would choose Vegapunk. 
Now, the idea of Vegapunk showing up at Wano is an idea I've discussed at multiple points in the past. Don't get me wrong, the idea of Fujitora and Green Bull coming to Wano is a very exciting one, but also a very foreboding thought. Because even if both are after what's good for Wano, they are still marine officers who may clash with other pirates. So perhaps at best, driving the pirates off immediately out of the island, and at worst, resulting in more combat, which may be fun from an action standpoint, but not the nice resolution I'd like to see as the end of this long and heavily laden arc. Whereas in Vegapunk's case, as opposed to the other admirals, there's a greater chance of a happy ending in that Vegapunk may be able to reverse the effect of the Smile Devil Fruits, which was created by his former colleague Caesar Clown. And aside from this, I can see quite a number of potential reasons to support Vegapunk showing up at Wano. There are a number of significant connections between the Wano arc to Vegapunk's character. On top of the Smile Devil Fruits, there's the Artificial Devil Fruit which Vegapunk Punk created himself based on Kaido's lineage factor, which is currently being demonstrated to be quite the surprising success by Momonosuke, contrary to Vegapunk determining it a failure. The numbers in Kaido's crew have also been said to have been created at Punk Hazard, and whilst that doesn't confirm Vegapunk's involvement, it does make it likely, given that we know Vegapunk did throw his hand in gigantification experiments in the past. And then more recently, Queen also revealed his connection to the scientists, all of them forming the genius group Mads, along with others including Vince Smoke Judge. So there are already a lot of links to the character which sets us up for some potentially very interesting developments and interactions if Vegapunk does indeed arrive. Also, if the reason why the Marines can afford to go to Wano is because of the power brought by the new SSG unit, and it is indeed this unit that is moving on Wano, then it makes sense for Vegapunk to come along to oversee his new experiment. But another figure or figures we could suppose may appear at Wano is none other than Luchi himself and the other CP0 members like Kaku and Stussy, whom we saw to be accompanying Luchi in the last chapter. I know I said at the beginning of the video that it doesn't appear that Luchi is inside a ship, and whilst I do stand by that observation, this shouldn't completely remove him from this discussion. Maybe Luchi had a taste for the finer things in life, and has had a special window room specially designed for him. I know I'm half joking, but Luchi coming to Wano could be a nice way for some storylines to come full circle. For one, I'd love to see the first truly threatening Zoans to make a reappearance in an arc that has such a heavy focus on the strength of Zoans. It would also be interesting to see how he fares up against some of our current antagonists. And I may be in the minority here, but I think it could be cool to see the strength development of some characters who aren't our protagonists. There's also the fact that Luchi did once say that he would chase Robin to the ends of the earth to capture her, and so it's only fitting that he makes a personal appearance at Wano to make good on this promise. One thing's for certain, Robin is in danger. And any marine presence at Wano is sure to lead to some very interesting plot developments and possibly even some exciting combat. And whilst many of us believe that it will be the Straw Hats to come to Robin's aid, with Robin herself commenting that she's not worried about powerful figures out to kidnap her as she has very powerful friends who will protect her, maybe those friends aren't only limited to the Straw Hats. But this is the topic for our next discussion, so for this video, please leave a comment below on your thoughts and whether there are any other world government figures whom I've missed but you believe could be showing up at Wano, and don't forget to like and share the video. Please do subscribe if you'd like to hear my thoughts on who will be fighting the world government if or when they show up, as well as other One Piece discussions. Also join our Joyfleet Discord server if you want more One Piece related fun with other like-minded fans, and also remember that becoming a patron member will give you special roles and powers within that server. Thank you to our patrons who help support the channel. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.